Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Wii emulator, aka the Dolphin emulator, on your ROG Alloy and ROG Alloy X. Really super simple to do. Just want to say this video does not condone piracy, it is for educational purposes only, and you should always get your ROM via legal means. Okay, with that disclaimer out the way, let's begin. First of all, you want to launch up a web browser, you want to search for Dolphin emulator. And go to the Dolphin Emulator page. I'll provide a link to this in the description. Click download, scroll down, and select the latest release. As of creating this video, it is 2409. You want Windows X64. Click that. Your download. I've already got it, so you know, there we go. And the other thing you will need is obviously games. So let me just show you. I've put all my games. I've only got one right now. But let me change the view as well. You don't need to do this. Just, yeah, get rid of that. I've got a folder called ROMs in my SD card. And I've got a folder called Wii. And in there, I've got my games. So I've got Mario Kart Wii. This is in .rvz format. So this is a relatively newer format that's supported by the Dolphin emulator. And if you have .iso, that will work. And .wbfs that will also work as well. So if you have any games in any of those formats, you know, you'll be good to go. So, uh, you know have your game make sure it's not like in a zip format you know extract that by right clicking it and click extract all now what you want to do is go to where you downloaded your dolphin emulator i'm going to delete this one because i already have it right click it extract all and click extract okay now that we have it extracted in here the note folder called dolphin-x64 and in days where all the files are this is what we need so i'm going to right click copy oh, i forget which one copy yeah copy that one i i, I recommend putting it somewhere a bit more permanent you can put it in your like program files i've got a folder on my sd card called applications and i'm going to put it over here And then before we run it, we'll do one last thing, and that is just rename the folder because by default, the folder is called a Dolphin Dash, I think 64, Dolphin Dash X64. And referring to it's been, up, it's been supported up to you know, 64 bit architecture. But you know, I, I just want a clean name, and I just want it called Dolphin. So that's just an optional step, but one I think that is worth taking. And now, like I said, right click, rename, and right click. Actually, you know what? Rename. But I'm going to trigger the keyboard using this. There we go. Little tip for you. You can open up the command center and trigger it, and that's it. Now, open up the Dolphin folder. Go to Dolphin, not Dolphin Tool, Dolphin. And then we'll go through the setup process. You can click note this. And in here, there's a few things that we want to do. First of all, we'll go to config. And for the most part, you can leave this as default. If anything is really majorly different, you know, make sure you change it to you know what mine says. System language, we're going to change that to English. And it's already at English, so that's fine. But uh, you know, you would have to resize if you wanted to change it. You can change the theme as well. And in audio, the main thing I would say is make sure the audio backend is set to cube. B or actually set to something. Sometimes I've downloaded emulators and there's like no audio backend selected, even though it's available. Make sure the DSP emulation engine is um, recommended. In paths, you want to add your game path, so click add. And for me, it's SD card, ROMs, we select. There you go. The game has now appeared. And you can add multiple. So you could have different folders in different locations, possibly for whatever reason. And you can do that as well. And if you have, again, in the little tip, if you have a folder within a folder that might contain the game, maybe you have like like a Wii folder within there, you might have a Mario folder and all the Mario games. Then above that, you might have like a Call of Duty folder and then all the Call of Duty games. Just click search subfolders. I don't have that, so I don't need to do it. But again, you can organize your games like that. For GameCube, you just leave all this as default. 
and we uh, make sure it's all default make sure insert sd card is selected and allow write to sd card as well but apart from that we're all good to go next you want to go into graphics and here the back end you want to select vulcan everything else you can pretty much leave as it is you want to select vsync to you know on in enhancements change the internal resolution to 720p if there's any games that you're playing and the performance isn't quite what you want it should be some with this emulator the, with like a, something as old as the wii emulator you should be fine but i say just do 2x maybe even 3x you can try that anti-aliasing i find you don't need once you increase the internal internal resolution i'd say add the texture filtering to 16 times anisotropic filtering anisotropic filtering just for those that don't know it just helps with obscure angles textures can, can become a bit you know blurred it helps you know fix that little problem everything else you can leave as is hacks leave as it is in advance you can click show fps but i'll be using the built-in tool to show the fps but you have that option final thing we want to do is set up a controller <coughs> If you are playing let's say a gamecube game you can you can configure a gamecube controller the process is exactly the same and uh, but we're doing a wii remote so we're going to do emulate the wii's bluetooth adapter we're going to do emulate it so you can do different remotes and you want to click configure and here is where you um, you know map your controls first of all you can have a profile so you can uh, you know open the keyboard up name a profile click save and you can also load the profiles that you might have as well so the benefit of having profiles is you can have different profiles for different users and different games as well and in here you don't want to select keyboard mouse you want to select either anything that has aces text so either sdl or you know the input so these are just different ways of accessing you know the controls you know different sort of apis uh, you know as it were um, i'm just going to stick with sdl and to actually map it the other thing you'll need to do is oh click the bottom button here and open up your command center and if it closes that happens don't worry just wait a few seconds open it again <coughs> and in control mode select that to gamepad you also need gamepad is set to gamepad when you're in game as well now i can't actually use this as a mouse as you could before so you either have to use your finger on the screen or use an external mouse like i am using and here let's, let's just configure the controls you just go through it do you know, one or two do one as i don't know actually there's some back buttons so i'm not just start picking up the so I'm picking up the back button, so I might just do mm, <coughs> one, two. I'm trying to figure out what I should map it to. Hey, you know what? I'm happy to these. Home, I don't think I'll need that D pad up. So just, you know, fully map it. So even say it's left, up, down, right, that is probably, you know, a keyboard key. So you don't want that everything else we can leave extension so if you know your game needs an extension like a controller like a nunchuck for example which a lot of games do select that you can leave the rest as it is and we can configure the motion as well so the game i'm going to be testing at mario Kart Wii, i don't need motion for that like they had a motion option but i won't be using that but if you do want to configure your motion uh, you'll have to you know configure it you know for example if i want the pointer i'm gonna say use mouse control pointing so if i click that so now if i do put my finger on the screen as you can see the red dot is moving so it's based on the mouse position and you can you know override these as well so like if i do it with tilt for example and let's say the right there was no right analog stick on like the nunchuck and remote combo you would have a left analog stick on the nunchuck in your right hand control in the Wii mode, you would have no sort of analog stick per se. So I'm going to put it here. So if I do tilt up, forward, down, left, and right. And now if I do that, as you can see, that is literally emulating tilt. You can do something similar for swing as well. So you can just map these to either an analog stick or buttons. Feel free to you know do that again. The Wii mode, or you know the Wii emulator, it's a bit of a a weird one because of the sort of non-traditional control schemes some games 
you'll be fine. You can kind of map it like how you would, you know, like an Xbox or PlayStation, you know, emulator, and you're good to go. But in some games, you'll need some sort of motion, you know, possibly. So you want to emulate that accordingly or even connect up a separate Wii controller. Let me know if you would like to see that. I might create a video for that as well. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's going to be on a game per game basis. Motion input, we leave this as it is. Extension, same thing. You're going to want to map these as well. So this is the nunchuck right now. So for the stick, I'm going to say up. There we go. In Mario Kart, this is what's going to be controlling our, well, cart. Uh, we need to do the C and Z buttons. Z. I'm trying to think which one which. I think this will be the trigger. Put this at the button. And everything else, I'm going to leave as it is. You can obviously emulate the motion for... The nunchuck as well again there's a lot of stuff that you can emulate you know i've showed you how to do it pretty much you know it's the same if you need shake if you need tilt or if you need swing because you know something like what's it called a wii sport will probably need you know like the swing motion some of the game might need tilt or shake as well and like i say you can go to extensions and just change the controller accordingly and that's it i'm going to click x and we're all good to go so we can actually launch our game now so we just double click the game so if we want to make it go full screen you just swipe up go to dolphin and here i'll just use my mouse you go to emulation and there's toggle full screen right there there we go we're in full screen mode So as you can see, I can use the screen to act as the pointer. I'll get in game, play a little bit, and then I'll just show you one last feature. As you can see, I can you know, move around. I want regular Mario, not baby Mario. Oop, just knocked my camera. So we're going to have a bit of slow door, that was a bit of slow down. Uh, again, if it's too much in areas that you that are like important in the plane of the game, then I will recommend you know just knocking down the settings a bit. How do you hop in this game? I can't remember. Could you hop? Sure, you could. Almost got him. Oh, I got my box. There's a banana skin there. So that is, it. that is how you set up the Wii emulator. One last thing I want to show you. If you swipe up, you, know, you can just can close your game by clicking. There's like an X button that appears there. You can go here and just close it. But if you go to emulation, you can stop as well. If you go to save state, this is pretty cool. And I'm just going to say save state to selected slot. But you can change the slot as well. Okay, so what that means is if I close the game out, turn the emulator off. Now, if I launch it back up, 
because you know save states are one of the most amazing things about emulators as you can see it just took us back to the start of the game so as you would expect it to if we go here go to emulation load state and it's in slot one as you can see it's taken us back literally where we was mid you know race in the pause menu as well so that's one of the best things about emulators in my opinion are the save and load states that is how you set up the Wii emulator, okay, the Dolphin emulator, like I was saying. If you know you have a few you know performance stuff like that, knock down the resolution just back to the regular native. And you know, you can knock down the anisotropic filtering as well if you do have any you know major issues, but you know, for the most part, you should be fine. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to post down in the comments below. If you love the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye.